Hi, folks. Hi, folks. Hope everybody's okay. Love to everybody out there. And uh, love to everybody. Hope everybody's okay. I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about Bernie and about Boltman or Boltman and Bernie. And I uh, hope everybody's okay. Just a short video. And uh, it's love to everybody out there. It's the new year. And uh, hope that you are uh, all uh, set for the new year and uh, getting on with the new year and looking forward to the new year. I know that I am. Um, just recently, I've read uh, a really good book uh, by uh, Rudolf Bultmann on um, history and eschatology. I don't believe uh, in the basic tenets of Bultmann. He was a liberal and I'm a conservative evangelical. But I did find the book very interesting. I have a real passion for historiography, the idea of how we know history, how we write history. And in that book, he goes into the history of historiography looking at all the various uh, uh, periods of history and the different writers, how they viewed history. And I found it very instructive, especially concerning the Enlightenment, because as soon as man ditched God and began to set himself free from God and say, we just want rationality, he actually lost his rationality, especially when he, we get to Darwinianism and the that the historical process is natural selection and mutation which negates the very foundation of rationality so it was a really interesting read um the second thing i want to mention before we get on to bernie is there is an archive channel run by some atheists supported by quite a lot of atheists out there and i'm just asking the atheist community um uh, to close that archive channel down or put the videos on um, private. Some of the comments on, on those videos have made uh, one member of my family cry because the comments are just abusive. And um, I would ask the atheist community, uh, and there's an, a large number of atheists out there who run big YouTube channels uh, that are connected with this archive channel, and I would ask you to Consider my family, consider my friends, um, the abusive comments that are being put on there, and to have compassion because that was a period of my time of my life when I wasn't well, was I wasn't at my best. And I'm not saying hide the videos, I'm not saying get rid of the videos, but at least um, put them on private and at least uh, show some dignity and respect uh, to a person who was who has moved on and who is more productive in his life. And, um, you know, I think I'm asking for compassion from the atheist community. Um, so I'll leave it there with you. Um, but it's a real concern uh, for my family. It's a real concern for me because of the abuse of those videos. And also that they are not in context with the whole context of the work that I've done. I've done about 2,000 videos. And 1,000 of them are sermons and lectures. And you can't see them often because I haven't got them on my channel. Uh, and people are only seeing things of a one-sided uh, about me, and it's not fair. And uh, so I would ask you to uh, rectify that by putting them on private. I'm not going to fight you. I'm not going to mention it again. But I'm appealing to the atheist community's compassion. Uh, and to be accountable as a community and to show that you're not going to take advantage and abuse someone uh, when they were at the weakest point, but you're actually going to show kindness and compassion. That's why I appreciate Bernie Dehealer. He has not taken advantage of my past. He's not used it in any way to uh, gain an advantage in discussion and debate. He's debated me and discussed me. Uh, purely on arguments and evidence. Bernie uh, De Hilo is an atheist. He has debated people like Matt Slick, Eric Hovind. Uh, he's debated PhDs. Uh, and I found Bernie to be very professional in his manner. He's a very humble guy. Um, very, very humble and a very gracious guy. And um, I really appreciate the opportunity to discuss with you and debate with you uh, over the last few weeks, Bernie, and I found you impeccable in your uh, behavior concerning me, uh, and I appreciate that. 
I had a debate and discussion recently, and it's up on Bernie's channel. It's also up here. And we tackled five topics, and I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed researching Bernie's apologetic method. I spent a full day researching him, listening to his debates and discussions. And I find it sad, Bernie, that your whole argument, your whole life, your whole reason why you've left seminary is based on one argument and the one argument that you are going to go to your death with and i hope that you don't is on mutation it is on chromosome two and i find that staggering that you would build base your whole eternal destiny on that one argument um i i'm dumbfounded i think in the discussion that we had bernie i think that you ran away from the is the word of god is the word of god the bible the word of god you run away from those arguments about logic and about morality you can't account for logic in your worldview in philosophical naturalism um you've admitted that logic is immaterial and yet in ph philosophical naturalism the main field is the physicalist so how do you get immaterial logic with physicality of the universe the two don't go together so you know you failed on that you ran away from that on the historical jesus studies you didn't know what criteria we use in historical jesus studies you didn't know the cutting edge research on on josephus um you mentioned bar ehrman but i told the uh listeners uh the basic problems with bar ehrman uh that there are philosophical presuppositions in his work and also um you were aware of the Gnostic Gospels and the relationship to the four Gospels, how the Gnostic Gospels are dependent on, on the four Gospels. Uh, on the issue of science, you was not able to provide any data for evolution. And I gave you data from evolutionists concerning this issue of mutations and mathematics, which would implore evolution. I even quoted an atheist scholar uh, such as uh, Thomas Nagel, who is a philosopher, uh, who says that he's got problems with evolution himself, that it negates rationality. Um, at the end of the debate, you threw in a lot of questions concerning uh, Jesus. How can he know and yet still be God? How can he, you know? And uh, I, I answered them for, by the issue of the boundary of the unknowable and also on the issue of uh, Philippians chapter 2. In all, I found it a very professional discussion, a very amicable discussion. And um, I did think on the skeptic side, on your side as skeptics, you didn't bring any ammunition. You didn't bring any data to the table. You didn't bring any, any sharp reasoned arguments or any data to the discussion. That was quite uh, clear in the debate that we had. Um, I don't think you presented one fact or one logical argument to substantiate your position. But I presented a number of logical arguments and also put a lot of data on the table. I hope that this will lead to other debates and discussions. My main priority is from time to time to preach on YouTube to do Bibles on you Bible studies on YouTube uh, that's my main priority from time to time I don't want to be getting into any debates all the time with atheists but from time to time I would love to debate an atheist or a Muslim apologist like Bernie de Gila, someone who's done a lot of work in debating a lot of work in apologetics for their side I'd love to debate Richard Carrier I'd love to debate Dr. Price. So if you guys are listening out there, if you could have a look at the video uh, that I've done with Bernie, and uh, if you would consider uh, debating me for a two-hour period on did Jesus rise from the dead or are the Gospels reliable, um, I'd really appreciate it. If there's any Muslim apologist out there who would like to debate me on is Jesus uh, the Son of God or is did Jesus rise from the dead or is the Bible or the Quran the word of God? Please, please get in contact with me because I'd love to hear from you.
but debates take up a lot of time they take up a lot of research my debate with bernie i spent eight hours studying his videos i made meticulous notes on his apologetic method i had to do background reading in some of the quotations that he used so debates take a lot of time and a lot of work and a lot of research to go in but i enjoy the cut and thrust of it i really enjoy the study i enjoy the challenge and then i enjoy the discussion and i really thoroughly enjoyed it with uh, bernie bernie de healer i really enjoyed it so go to his channel you can find it linked on the debate that i had with him and uh, look out for his discussions on his channel and uh, i put a, a call out to any atheist apologist out there if you want to go one-on-one -on -one with me in a fair formal academic discussion or debate please get in touch with me i'd love to hear from you i tend to find the atheist community run away from me and they run away from me because i'm not the brightest person on the block i'm not but the reason why they run away from me is because i will go and look at the cutting edge research in whatever field we're discussing and when we're debating i'll quote cutting edge research the atheist community don't want you to see that they don't want you to see that creationists or evangelicals can do that they want you to, you to think that we're somehow idiots that we're not really we're just ignoring the scholarship of the day that we're not really in touch with the scholarship of the day and that's how they want to present us so anybody who who will come in a discussion and present a few quotes or a few articles that they've read of academics in evolution or in historical jesus studies the skeptical community don't want you to see people like that so what they tend to do is they tend to try and isolate people who were able to present things like that and so many of the atheist community want you to, want you to be isolated from me they don't want you to hear what i have to say they don't want you to see that i can go and study the opposition and look at their scholarship whatever field it is and 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 get a grasp of it and present weaknesses in their scholarship whether that be in genetics whether that be in philosophy or whether that be in historical studies of, on Jesus or the Bible. So like I said, I'm not the brightest person, but I will try my best to get the best detailed scholarship in a particular topic. And uh, unless you're intellectually honest and want a real intellectual honest discussion, you're not going to want to engage. And that's what I found with the skeptical community. There's a lack of intellectual honesty and a lack of really wanting to face up to the intellectual issues and uh, and presenting more had hominins and more um more setting up the, the the debate for themselves where they set up an opponent and 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 uh ambush that opponent rather than actually saying you know what i'm going to treat you as an equal we're going to have a fair debate, a fair discussion, and let's see where the truth lies. For Bernie, Bernie's one of the better ones that will try to do that. Um, but even Bernie uh, can't help but balancing the scales a little bit. Even on the debate, he's put quotes of um, Thomas Paine, a quote from his own book, whereas I'm, he's not put any quotes of my scholars or books of i gave him a list of books to put on uh on the video and the debate he didn't put any of them up he's put my website up but he didn't put any of the books uh so he's balancing the tables a little bit and that's not good if you want to really engage let people have the other side let them have the other side of the scholarship and um you know i gave bernie some really top academic books in by poitras on redeeming science and redeeming sociology and bernie you should put them up bro uh, and be intellectually honest let people study for themselves and find out where the truth is so that's where i'm at i tend to find that again the skeptical community we see this in the area of evolution 
you'll find the scholarship in evolution uh, on the tail end of those who are the fundamentalist evolutionists who defend evolution you'll tend to find that they will try to strip you of your free speech they will try to strip you of allowing you to have free speech we've seen this time and time again Thomas Nagel the uh, American philosopher who has expressed doubts about evolution has come under tremendous academic pressure by many many people uh, for for doing that um, people like Belinsky who's questioned evolution has come under tremendous fire and academic uh, bullying uh, for doing that you tend to find that the the more radical fundamentalist evolutionist who the scientist who are trying to prop it up like Lawrence Krauss in physics um, Dawkins in evolution you tend to find that these are people who will try to take away your free speech try to stop you from having academic freedom especially in the universities time and time again it's on record time and time again professors academics brilliant in their field whether it be physics whether it be biology whether it be chemistry if they express an interest in questioning evolution or if they recommend a book that maybe questions evolution they will be sacked from their job immediately they will be stripped of their academic prestige and so opposition to this is uh, muted and then this is filtered down by a whole raft of about a hundred thousand militant uh, atheists out there on the internet who are using their blogs and their videos and and uh, to browbeat any opposition against them you know that's why they 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 opposed me for exposing them about this they didn't like me to expose them but they will browbeat you they will expose you they will do everything they can to silence you and so it begs the question there if evolution is correct if evolution is true why not allow it to stand on its own academic laurels why not allow it to stand on debate and evidence why all this taking away people's free speech another example uh, in in the uh, uh, taking away free speech grayling uh, one of the great atheist philosophers I mean this man I respect this man is a brilliant thinker this man wrote uh, an excellent work uh, I think it was on Descartes that I read a few years ago this man is extremely intelligent extremely cultured and yet he tried he has tried to stop funding going to a lectureship that was lecturing on the Trinity and how it related to uh, physics and and the, and the natural sciences and that is ridiculous that is absolutely crazy and you're finding this not only amongst the atheists the skeptics not only amongst the evolutionists but we're finding that free speech is being taken away in the academic world especially in the West uh, generally speaking uh, it, it, it's become like a, a, a Rockweiler that's turned on its owner because there are even feminists now <coughs> such as Jermaine Greer in the UK and uh, academics on the left this is academics on the left in the UK and in America that are absolutely scared and frightened now because they realize that their free speech is being taken away so for example there have been uh, that have been feminist and, and lesbian lecturers who maybe didn't take the party line of the left on on lesbianism or feminism and they've come to a university in the UK and students have bullied them and stopped them from giving their lectures these are people on the left who were, who were into like free freedom in sex and freedom in 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 in, in academic freedom who were being uh, who 
who oppose conservatism or who oppose uh, Orthodox Christianity to a man, to a woman. They oppose it absolutely. And yet their free speech has been taken away. So it's not just Christians who is, whose freedom of speech is being taken away. It's not just academics who, who, who want to question evolution. Their freedom's being taken away. It's also concerning academics who are more liberal in their attitude to sex, liberal in their attitude to, to many other areas. Even their freedom is being taken away by the ultra new orthodoxy of uh really uh, a leftist agenda that is so so narrow-minded and bigoted it's political correctness gone mad and uh you know news reporters in the uk and america are, are, are waking up to this are reporting on this universities are silencing free speech an example there was a directive uh in the uk uh given uh, two academics in 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 some universities, and it said this: you uh, they called trigger words. You can't use trigger words in your class. So, like, uh, you know, if, if you mentioned uh, uh, the word homosexuality, any trigger word, if it's mentioned in your class and they're told about it, you know, you you get reprimanded. That's kind of Stalinism coming back to haunt us. <laughs> Also, another example is literature. In universities, this is documented in universities in the UK that that students and in America, this has happened in America, that students are told not to read certain books, ancient manuscripts. Like, for example, in drama, uh, there might be a, a Greek a dramatician who, who mentions uh, the role of a man and a woman uh, in a derogatory way. So, oh, you mustn't, you mustn't study that uh, Greek uh, uh, playwright. Uh, you mustn't study that particular book. That's censorship. That's academic censorship. That's come, coming in in America and in the UK. This is well do, uh, documented, documented, well, well documented. This is not me. This is professional uh, news reporters who were well-respected news reporters both in America and in the UK who have mentioned this the, the, and also not only the news reporters but MPs academics like Jermaine Greer who's a top academic uh, in, in uh, feminism her free speech has been taken away sometimes um, so it's not just happening to Christian Christians and evangelicals and scholars uh, who are criticizing evolution but it's also happening to people like Jermaine Greer. So this is a very, very serious, serious concern. And one of the problems is, one of the problems that is creating this uh, fuel of taking away people's rationality and, and, and fuel of debate and discussion is YouTube and the internet. Because what happens is we have thousands tens of thousands of these narrow-minded bigots who are half educated buffoons who think they are scholars who think they know what they're talking about and rather than uh, encourage insightful discussion and debate browbeat people into their position by homing in like a mass thuggery crowd on on the internet and bullying people and they're doing it now on the academic campuses of, of universities to to academics who perhaps are um, opposed to them in some way but yet they should appreciate them because they're generally on their side people like Jermaine Greer uh, and, and it's this uh, thuggery uh, anti-intellectualism uh, which re uh, mindless um, crowd mentality that is on YouTube and the internet that is filtered down now into the academic world and is having serious repercussions in the universities in America and in the UK. Serious repercussions. And all of us are in a fight for rationality. All of us are in a fight to maintain civilization, to maintain, maintain good, honest, fair discourse and debate. You know, that's why 
for all my failings, I've always called for academic discussion and debates. Always. Always. Even in my crazy times. Because I believe that that is, you know, if that goes, if fair discussion and debate goes, then we have nothing left. Because if that goes, then it's all over, not just for Christianity, but it's all over for everybody else. And that's what you're seeing. Because those basic civilizational things of decency and rationality have left us on the internet, generally speaking, and, filter, and the filtering into the universities is having a, a catast catastrophic effect on uh, on rational discourse in in uh, in every area of life. So we who are on the internet, we who are involved in that, we have a high duty and responsibility to continue to encourage whether we're atheist, and there are some good atheists out there doing good work, encouraging good rational debate, and they're, they're excellent. You know, Ozzy is an example. Uh, John McDropout is an example. Bernie Dehealy. These are good examples of people who set a good standard of discussion in, uh, on a popular level. And then there are people like at, uh, Sheffield University, Dr. Crosley, uh, people like that who, who are impeccable in the way they deal with people. And on, on, on the Christian side, there are many, many good uh, Bible thumping wingnut on a popular level. Matt Slick, Eric Hovind on popular level. Uh, William Wayne Craig on a, a popular level. On more academic, there are some uh, academics, theologians uh, like Dr. Al Muller, people like that. Uh, so, you know, there are many, many people out there, both on a popular and academic level, that have good standards and are doing great work. In, in maintaining rational discussion and debate. And I think that we should do that. We should move away from this crowd thuggery, anti-intellectualism that seeks to home in on somebody, uh, maybe some apologist, whether they atheist or Christian, and bully them because of sheer numbers and because of abusive words, whether it be on the internet, whether it be in a university, or whether it be in a political meeting, we should we should challenge that and say no we're not having any of that all right we don't agree with that politician or we don't agree with that academic or we don't agree with that apologist we don't agree with their views but they have a right to their opinion and if they can defend it rationally they have a right to defend their position on a rational basis all of us whether we're atheist christian muslim jew hindu uh, sikh whoever we are we should all agree that that is the right way to be and the right way to continue to be and the right way to go. And we must be watchful, ever watchful, ever watchful of this anti-intellectualism on the internet and that's seeping into the universities that is pseudo-intellectual, that is really mindless thuggery internet bullies who pick upon people by mass crowding and 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 going down to a YouTube channel or going down to a, an atheist apologist or Christian apologist or going down to a university or going down to a political meeting and just bullying people by sheer numbers because there's 10, 30, 40, 50, 60 or 100 of you and, and you shout that person down either on YouTube or a, a political rally or at a university and that is uh, the sign of the times and that is something that we have to oppose. We have to, all of us, maintain uh, a civilized, respectful, fair, honest discourse with each other. And for that matter, I want to recommend Bernie because he is an atheist and he has set a long-standing tradition of treating people with respect. He might, We might disagree with each other. He might do it tongue-in-cheek and it'd be a little bit sar sarcastic sometimes. But generally speaking, he's done a good work in trying to foster debate and discussion. And that is the way to go. Matt Slick has done the same. Eric Hovind has done the same. Bible Thumping Wingnut has done the same. Ozzy's done the same. Uh, Matt Dropout has done the same. They've tried to maintain, they just don't want to get into that kind of world, you know, and I think that that's the way to go. I've gone on about it, but I'm laboring it 
because there are worrying signs now that this internet bullying has moved onto the university company, campuses. And it, it comes down to the fact that on the internet, people think that because they have a YouTube channel or because they have a website or because they, they know a little bit about a subject that they, they know everything. And they assume, and, and, and it, 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 cre it, it the, there's a narcissism, an intellectual narcissism, where these people think they're unchallenged or they think that they're somehow uh, impeachable or you can't deal with them. And so they have these grand postures on the internet, posturing against people, saying grandiose statements against people, and they're not challenged. They're not. They're not accountable. And, and c accountability is important. You know, there was a time when I was on YouTube, and I was making uh, loads of videos every day, and I wasn't accountable. I, I I'd had a breakdown, and I'd made mistakes, and I, I was a broken man. I was making videos, and it was not good because I was not accountable at the time. And I, I am accountable now. I've got some friends around me. I'm in a church plant. So if I make any mistakes, my friends will would take me to task. Uh, I've been on the leadership team for a year. If I made some bad videos or something, I, I would be taken to task. So I'm accountable now. But before I was not accountable, and a lot of people on the internet are not accountable. They're not accountable for what they say, and it's not good. You've got to be accountable. You have to have people who can sit down with you and say, you know, what you're saying is out of order. What you're saying is wrong. You know, that is not fair. That is just under, on. you, you know, you're just not being right in what you're saying. Uh, you're not dealing with people in the right way. Your attitude's wrong. Yeah, and, and accountability is really important, you know, and you can't be doing these things and not be accountable, especially if you're a Christian uh, and you have a ministry on YouTube. You have to have some accountability, either with your local church or with some leadership or with fellow Christians. That, uh, that you can talk to and, and and they can say, you know, what you're doing there is not right. You need to stop it. And accountability is important. And the problem is there's no accountability on the Internet. So we have loads of people on various sides of the intellectual debate. And many of them aren't accountable. And they end up, uh, it ends up becoming uh, uh, a, a community of, you know, in every area, whether it be sociology, whether it be psychology, philosophy, biology, medicine, uh, sci science, physics, uh, any area you tend to think, you know, the bloggers and YouTube YouTubers are in any of these areas. There's often no accountability. And then they and even academics who have YouTube channels and academics who, who are making blogs, there's no accountability. And and then we have this scenario where we, we've created a more like a communist state on the internet that filters into the universities filters into public life of just these people who are doing witch hunts saying we don't like you you can't say that rather than say well let's have a rational discussion a rational debate i've gone on and on and on about this topic forgive me but it, it's a serious issue and i hope that you uh are aware of it and, and continue to do the good work that you're doing on your channel, on your blog, on your website, on your university campus, on your in your political work, in your news reporting. Continue to encourage discussion and debate. You know, we can agree to disagree. At the end of the day, there is no body, nobody that I know that I would not go and have a cup of tea with and buy them a McDonald's. Nobody. Because at the end of the day, if we can't do that, if I can't sit down with you and have a chocolate milkshake together and a, and a, and a cheeseburger from McDonald's together, or if we can't go to Costa Coffee and have a coffee together or a cup of tea together, if we can't sit together and have a meal, and chat and be friends at the end of it then what is the point of it 
And there are people out there, both on the Christian side and the atheist side, and every other side, whether it be climate change debaters or whatever it is, and you won't sit down with the other opposition and have a cup of tea in the chat and be friends after it. And if you can't do that, then there's something wrong with your position. There's something seriously wrong with your position. If you can't sit down with your opponent and have a laugh and a cup of tea and even put your arm around them and say, how are you doing, mate? Are you okay? All right? And I say that to everybody out there, all my enemies out there on YouTube land. I want to say to you, if I ever see you, you want to come and have a cup of tea with me, I'll buy you a cheeseburger and we can have a cup of tea or I'll buy you a chocolate milkshake and we'll chill out and we'll be friends. If you want friendship, you got friendship with me because I don't have any bitterness or any animosity against any of my enemies out there. I genuinely don't. I genuinely do not have any animosity or any hatred towards anybody out there, whoever you are. I just don't do don't have that and and I don't want that in my life. I want to have a a love and a genuine love and a genuine respect even for those who who may disagree with me whether whatever position you are whatever camp you are the thing about me is i respect your free speech whoever you are i really really do i i i if your free speech is taken away i would be the first to defend it i don't care who you are if you're an atheist or a gay person or any minority anybody who is being trampled on and your free speech is taken away, I would be the first to defend your free speech. I really would, because I'm very passionate about freedom of speech. I'm very passionate that people have that freedom. Because if people don't have freedom in a democracy to, to speak, then we lose our freedom. And and so it's really important that we have freedom of speech, but and, and that people can challenge you and, and, and say, well, you know what, I disagree with you. Defend your position and let's, let's discuss it. You know, and I really find that in this modern age in the West that freedom of speech is under attack and, and freedom of speech is being taken away, not just for Christians, but for those who are even not non-Christians, freedom of speech is under attack and is being taken away. And uh, I, I'm very, very passionate about that. I really, really am. Because I know that, I, I just know that uh, in, in my own life, uh, doing street preaching, um, being a preacher, um, freedom, without that freedom, without the freedom to be able to do that, uh, I wouldn't be able to get my message out, you know, and um, I enjoy going up and down universities talking to people, I enjoy the, the, the discussion and, and debate, and um, I just think it's a tragedy when there are these in this modern age that there's this kind of bigotry from this political correctness brigade that that think that they're like somehow the catholic church of the middle ages that or the mccarthy years you know in america where the communists uh the you know they had the trials for the communist uh sympathizers it's like that today you know that that McCarthyite spirit where you can't say anything without them jumping on you and, and criticizing you, or you might lose your academic job or something like that. It's, it's getting to be like that now. And, you know, when that happens, that's a sign of real decay in Western culture when that happens. And there's real signs of decay in Western uh, culture and Western discourse when we're into that McCarthyite culture where any word you say as an academic or a thinker or uh, in the public sphere, you jumped on and, 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 and you're, you're accused of being a bigot, but really it's them who are the bigots who just don't like any opposition to what they're saying. I've labored the point. I'm going to go. It's good to be with you. I'm looking forward to the new year. And... Uh, there's nothing else to report, really. Um, uh, just trying to think. Uh, just pray for the street preaching. It'll be starting again. Pray for the church plant in Manchester. Uh, reformed church plant. And um, pray for that. 
Uh, we're having some great times in the Bible and studying the Bible. Uh, we're having some great times in the meetings. Uh, pray for the street preaching uh, and that, uh, you know, when we go back to the universities that we get some good conversation with students. Um, pray pray uh, for the trip to Africa. Uh, you know, hopefully, we'll see how it goes, but I'm planning a trip, um, but we need to do the planning. <laughs> so I need to meet with uh, the person involved there and uh, to do that planning. And yeah, everything's going fine. Everything's going great. Um, I'm just pursuing God. The main thing is to pursue God, to seek God, to, to long for him, to, to be in his word. I'm really enjoying uh, reading the reform books again. Uh, I'm getting more and more interested in Dutch reform theology at the moment. Uh, I want to read Brackel, uh, Systematic Theology. And so I'm really getting into getting back to my reform roots. Uh, you know, the Westminster Confession of Faith um, is here. So I'm rereading that, uh, Shaw's Exposition, Robert Shaw, and uh, really enjoying that. And so, yeah, so I'm getting back into the Reformed faith, reading my Calvinistic roots and books and history books and theology books. I'm studying Greek, which is hard work, but I'm enjoying I'm getting to enjoy it now. Uh, so that's good. And uh, yeah, this is good. we've had some really good times in this like church plan. Uh, it's just been thrilling. We've just had some really good discussions uh, on the Bible. It's been really edifying. It's so edifying just to be in the Word of God. Uh, it really is. Anyhow, I'm just going to close with... Um, I just read the psalm that I read uh, debating Bernie and then we'll just have a prayer so sorry for going on about free speech but it is something that is important to me and I've been reading a lot of articles in the Daily Mail that have been documented professors who are losing uh, who, are, who are being shouted down by students and politicians and Academics from the left being shouted down on university campuses and they, they, they've they traced it back to the internet that people on the internet where the people are not accountable. So, so I'm going to read Psalm 1 and then we'll just pray. It's good to be with you. Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law doth he meditate day and night, and he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of waters that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he do shall prosper. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind driveth away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knoweth the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly perish. Just going to pray for a bit so you can join me and uh, let, let's pray. Father God, we come before you today. Lord, we confess every sin. Lord, we acknowledge our guilt. We acknowledge, O oh God, our failure. Father, forgive us our pride. Forgive us, O oh God, our lack of love. Forgive us, O oh God, for not being what we should be. Father, forgive me for my failure, for my weakness, for my sin, Lord. I'm nothing. And I ask for your forgiveness and cleansing for your mercies Lord Father I thank you for Bernie Lord I thank you even though he's an atheist I thank you for his humility and his kindness and Father I just pray for him that you bless him and his family Lord I pray that you bless his children and I pray that you bless him and his wife and Father I just pray that you'd 
bless them. And I pray that they would come to know you as Lord and Savior, Lord. I pray that you'd open Bernie's heart, Lord, to the gospel, that, Lord, he'd come and trust in you, Lord. Speak to him, Lord. Work in his life. Lord, minister to him. Show him your grace. Show him your love. Show him your blessings, Lord. Lord, I pray for your servants on the internet, Matt Slick, Ken Hovind, Dustin Seegers, and many, many others, Lord. Bible Thumping Wingnut, and Matthew 4.19. Father, I pray for many, many out there. Just be with them, Lord, and bless them in the work that they do. May they know your love. May they know your grace. May they know your care. Pray for those who oppose us. I pray for many of the atheists out there that they would know your love. That they would know your grace. That they would know your blessings. That they would know your care. That they would know your encouragement. Be with them, Lord, and bless them. Show them your love. Show them your grace. And may they come to know you. We pray for the church worldwide today. That you bless them. I pray for Sai Ten Bruggengate today. Bless him, Lord. May he know your love and may he know your care today. We pray for the church worldwide. That you bless the church. Strengthen the church. Encourage the church. May the church know your grace and your love. Bless us this Sunday, Lord, as we meet around your word in all the churches that we know throughout the world today. And so, God, be with us today. Be with our friends, be with our families, and go before us, Lord. We commit everything to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. God bless you. Hope that was a help. And hope to see you again. If I do, it'll be a Bible study or a preach. And I hope one day, again, we might hook up and have a debate. Love to everybody out there. Have a great 2016. Have a great 2016. May God's blessing shine upon you this year. May his love shine upon you this year. Get hungry for God, all that we would seek God, all that we would go for God, all that we would seek Him with all our hearts, with all our minds. Let us go for Him this year. God bless you, and uh, see you again soon. This is me. I'm going to have a rest for a bit, so take care. Don't forget my website, jasonburnspreacher.com, jasonburnspreacher.com. Don't forget you can get Twitter and facebook there and also uh my other channel you can also uh, go to bernie de Hila's channel and see the debate in full it's even it's also on this channel but you know go down to bernie's channel you'll see a lot of good discussions that he has there so wish you all the best god bless everybody god is good these are good days blessed days and it's good to be with you or oh, just good to be with you it's good to be with you love you all and keep in the word of god keep in the word of god see you soon take care god bless